This set of micrographs brings us back to the nucleus with which we started, but shows that if you allow the DNA to spill out and you wash it clean of some of its proteins, you can see what a tremendous extent of material it is. This long extent is what we need to duplicate. And our problem is that it's about 5,000 times longer than the diameter of the cell, and how do we achieve this process? The solutions that cells have come up with in order to solve this problem are numerous. One of them is that the DNA is packaged in more than one piece, as a rule, in eukaryotes anyway, and this means that we've divided up all that DNA into smaller segments. The DNA always replicated before cell division begins. This means that in eukaryotes we have a situation where the whole set of double DNA is ready for us to operate on. Another trick that the cell uses is to keep the, these um, sister chromatids, as they're called, the duplicated DNA double helices, fastened together so that the two identical pieces of DNA are linked non-covalently by a protein complex, and it's going to keep them in order while the cell is getting ready to divide. <clears throat> The other point is that the chromosomes will condense tremendously, decreasing their length down to make them an object that is small enough that its full extent is less than the diameter of the nucleus. So there's a tremendous amount of compaction, and then finally we will develop that special machine, the mitotic spindle, which can do the segregation job. Now, when DNA is replicating, what you have is here a, a piece of DNA which is a circle. This is actually a viral genome. And here is a replication fork. Over here is another replication fork. And the origin of DNA replication would have been here and up here. And this is now duplicated DNA. And these forks will travel apart, making completely replicated DNA. In a eukaryotic cell, the chromosomes are not circular. They're linear, but their linearity doesn't make the problem easy, and I mentioned that the DNA is held together as it is replicated. So here is a replication fork, here are the sister chromatids which have been produced by replication, and this is a complex called the cohesin complex, which in some way fastens these sister chromatids, as they're called, together, so that as the DNA wraps on the nucleosome core particles, which is the first stage of condensation, the sister chromatin, which is the name for the material that is DNA plus protein, is held together and these sisters are associated. Exactly how the cohesin complex does this is still not fully understood, but this diagrammatic representation of it surrounding the two is a plausible way to think about how it could link sister chromatids together. Once DNA replication is complete, condensation will occur, and here are multiple stages of the condensation diagrammed in a textbook form. The condensation is going to give us, in most cells, thousands of fold decrease in length. In some cells it's not so much, so as is common in biology there's a lot of variability and you have to uh, account for that as you're thinking about trying to understand a process in a simple term. But all eukaryotic cells use this packing on nucleosomes and the nucleosomes then pack together to form this fiber which looks like about um, 30 nanometers in diameter when it's seen in an electron microscope, and then this folds in loops, and then the loops condense, and finally it comes to the chromosome, which name of course means the colored body, and that gets that name because once it's condensed sufficiently, you can see these strands of DNA in the light microscope with sufficient um, good resolution and stains, and chromosomes were recognized as such even in the 19th century. Now, there's still a lot of work going on to try to understand this process, and proteins have been discovered that were thought at first to be extremely important for it. For example, a protein called cohesin, uh, sorry, condensin, which is involved in making the chromosome become more condensed. But it turns out that that protein is um, not necessary for the condensation process. It probably depends instead on a combination of post-translational modifications of the proteins that associate with the DNA in order to compact the chromatin by changing their charge and probably changing the proteins with which they associate.